I knew I was coming. <sighs> hello, hello. Recording in progress. All right, we are now being joined by Phil Davis. We'll begin with a few questions here in the room. Go ahead, Nolan. Phil, congratulations on the win. Uh, Thank great you. performance. Uh, talk to me about how you're feeling coming out of that one. Uh, very exhausted. You know, um, it is weird. He sets a, an interesting tempo. He has no, lots of movement, lots of feints, um, everything power. Nothing, nothing just like keep, my, my, my boxing coach would always say, you know, you got to throw some punches just to keep him honest. Nothing keeps you honest. He's, he's all power, all business. And it seemed like that, you know, he, would, he wouldn't move much, he wouldn't throw much, and then all of a sudden he'd come with these haymakers. Mm -hmm. um, did any of those hit you at any point? Did you, yeah, did they yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, luckily, um, I, I kind of, I'm a little bit awkward, so I, I usually get hit with glancing blows. So he got me a couple times off the, the top of the head and off the forehead, kind of skipped across. Um, but whew, and they're still, they, they still hurt, even though they're glancing. God dog, what does it feel like to get hit solid? Glad I'm glad I'll never know. Well, you seem to take them pretty well and you, you scored that takedown in the second round. I know there's a big story coming into it. The, the wrestling battle yeah, yeah. that people thought you were going to have. Um, how much of a confidence boost was that, uh, when you got them down at the, the, the midway through the second, um, you know, uh, coming out for the second round. Uh, I saw he was super sweaty. I was like, man, I might have missed my window. <laughs> I might have missed my window. That was uh, one of my takeaways from the uh, Nimcov fight was uh, I went to wrestling too late in the fight, and it, we were we were both way too sweaty. Um, but I saw that, and I was like, all right, it's going to have to be the perfect shot. You have to make sure you, uh, you know, really penetrate and get, get in deep on a guy like that. He has hips for days. He is you know, very athletic, turns his hips, and he'll get out of he'll get out of any bad shot. So really had to make sure I got it good. When you go to the judges' scorecards, and I mean, I think everybody in that building, media, fans, online, thought you clearly won that fight, and then you start to hear that it's a split. I mean, did you get nervous at all there for a second? Um, usually, uh, that's about the time where I start worrying, when they say, uh, you know, <laughs> when they announce it, that the first judge are like, oh, no. No, not one of these. But um, I, I felt pretty confident. Um, I had done more work over the, the body of the fight. Uh, Phil, over here. So mm -hmm. from an outsider's perspective, it, I started to realize that he got tired right when you started the wrestling. He seemed to drain out a lot faster from there. Yeah. Inside the cage, did you also notice that he was starting to tire out when you started wrestling more? Well, you know, not necessarily. Um, normally when people uh get tired they they aren't as strong and that his his strength never really faded his his activity may have a little bit but his his strength was very i mean god don't, he's strong he's a freak and uh, throughout uh, throughout the fight uh when it started the fans seemed to be more on his side but by the end they were all cheering for you and chanting your name how does it feel to turn the crowd like that after a performance oh man uh it's been a while since i had one of those um, not since, um, you know, competing down in Brazil three times <laughs> or, uh, you know, being a wrestler and wrestling at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Um, not, not too often do I hear, uh, you know, everybody cheering for the other guy. So it was, uh, it was good. To, it was good to be the bad guy for a while. All right. We'll take a couple more here. Giancarlo. Oh, hi, Phil. Uh, Kratz on the win there tonight. Uh, we talked last week about, you know, home field advantage type of thing and the change of scenery going into a fight. What was it like fighting at the SAP Center again? Well, part of the home field advantage is that the fans would be cheering for me. He had home field advantage. Uh, we, it was, <laughs> we were still at uh, San Jose, a city I've been to many times. I had my spots that I love to go to, um, to, you know, grab food or uh just the places in the neighborhood that i love to get food from so i, I had all the tools uh at my disposal which is usually uh a big hindrance and in, in, in having that home field advantage so I, I had all the necessary ingredients to have that home field advantage and uh he brought up he, he traveled well as we, as we would say in wrestling he brought up i brought a lot of fans kobe hey phil great game plan technically sound phenomenal fight just fantastic to watch. 
you fought everyone who's anyone in the light heavyweight division. And this is you all Romero kind of moving up to that class. Mm -hmm. How did he feel in comparison to other light heavyweights? Um, strength wise, um, no different, if not stronger. Um, uh, I, more than, more than some of the other guys, I felt like, uh, he didn't cover as much distance, uh, as often as I thought he would. Um, other than that, I, I think he's, uh, a very solid light heavyweight. And, and that's kind of what I expected. Um, he's he's a freak athlete, and I expected, uh, especially with a longer layoff in between fights, that he would uh, fill the gap between 185 and 205 pretty quickly. Now, given your position, your body of work, obviously you're waiting for the end of the tournament to happen. You're probably due another title shot very soon. But I want to ask you, who do you think they should match up Yoel Romero with? Man, uh, I would be what. a good opponent for him. Um, I always think that um, a southpaw southpaw matchup almost always ends in a knockout. They they're uh, they they just they don't they clash. Um, I think him versus the dragon um, will be an exciting matchup. Um, uh, let's see, that's just off the top. Um, I think you know, I mean, anybody you put him in there with is going to be, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be pretty good. Last one, Jay. Hey, Phil, congratulations on the win tonight. Uh, I got two quick ones, actually. First of all, you all seem to uh, express some surprise that the main event was only three rounds after the fight. Did you catch wind of anything he was saying about that? That it was only three rounds? Yeah, he was thinking it was going to be another two and it was a five round main. No, oh, I mean, like, uh, like some organizations do. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't think that that was ever communicated to me. I thought it was always three rounds, but I could see how, you know, if that's what you're used to, you can think that that, especially in the heat of the moment, you're like, it's over, it's over three rounds. Uh, no, he, uh, man, he's a very humble guy and, uh, he had good words to say after fight. And I know it was mentioned that you might have to wait till after the Grand Prix, but we know Rumble's out. We know Julius Angelicus is getting the title shot now. If anything were to happen, any of the other competitors were to fall out, and I think I just broke some news to you, um, would you be willing no, to step I back knew, in? I knew that. I knew that. No, you didn't, you didn't, <laughs> no, you didn't tell me nothing. I knew that. Would you be willing to step back in, though, if anything did happen? Is that what they want? They want me to step back in? No, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm saying October it. October 16th, I'll be there. Done. All right. Well, congratulations right, on the I win. I can't make that. I can't make that. <laughs> oh, don't do that to me. All right. Thanks a lot for the time, Phil. Congrats on the win. Thank you, guys.